In this video, I'm going to be going through using practical LSTMs. So I won't be going through too much of theory, and instead I'll be using uh, I'll be using the Keras package to show you how uh, LSTMs are used in practice and how they're trained. Right, so let's get started. So in this particular case, I am uh, importing Keras.models, right, so sequential, so you need to do this this bit. Right. Uh, by the way, I will be providing this notebook, so uh, yeah, feel free to use it on my GitHub repository. But what's what's really important is that you import these these few things, right? So from layers, we're going to be importing dense LSTMs and maybe drop out, which I might talk about depending on how how time goes. Right. So let's get started. So what I'm going to be doing in this uh, in this video is looking at the sine wave, right? So I'm going to try and get this, like say, up until 600 as the training set and then try and predict the rest of the sine wave as my test set. Okay, so now the thing with um, the thing with uh, LSTMs that's the way that they're using Keras is that you need to kind of reshape your problem, right? So, um, so what I'm going to be saying is if I take the first 20 points, then I need to try and predict the 21st point. Okay, so I, I can't do, say, uh, take the first point and do this and predict the second one. Well, you can, but it will be a really bad, um, bad training training set that you end up getting. Okay, so so that's that's really what this create data set uh, part is doing. It's it's rearranging your your train set. Okay, and and by the way, I borrowed this from one of the one of the blogs, and I will be posting that on on the description. Right, so please go and take a look at that as well. Right. Okay. So. Um, right. Let's let's look at the let's look at the data. Right. So in in this case, the uh, the x is sorry. So the data set, the y variable, if you want, is literally all of this, and then x variable is going to be uh, just just the first thousand values. Right. Um, okay. So so what have I done? So the first thing that I've done is I've scaled them so that it sits between zero and one. This is just something that you do in um, in 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 uh, neural networks in general, okay, so that so that you can get a, a good training set, so that you don't explore too much, okay. Um, and anyway, you don't have to worry too too much about that. But anyway, this is the part that you should worry about, okay. So the train test set, I end up getting this. So initially, before I did that, let me just show you what my the train shape is. So the train values, right? So it's just a it's just a two-dimensional array, but the shape specifically, okay, it's 670 by one. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking that in blocks of 20, all right? So the first block of 20 will be the first value to the, to the 20th, the second will be the second value to the 21st, third value to the 22nd, and so on, right? So in that case, when I rearrange it using this create data set thing, I end up getting this train shape, okay? So 650 by 20 by one. Okay, and my train y shape, which is just simply the y values. So the y values don't don't really have anything done to them except to cater in the fact that you took the first twenty blocks. I end up getting this this shape. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a uh, LSTM neural network, right? So and it's really easy in Keras because the first thing that you say is you set up your model to be a sequential model. And if you don't know, like it, this whole sequential thing really doesn't need to mean anything, right? So don't worry about it. But this is a that's this is the fun part, right? So so this thing. So you create the LSTM. I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to need 32 dimensions. The input dimension is one. Okay. So this is this part over here. I'll I'll talk about this one later. But all you've got to worry about is that I only have one single x value and I'm trying to predict one single y value, right? Even though I'm using the past 20 values, right? Um, yeah, the input dimension, the x dimension itself is just one. And the output dimension is one. I guess so that's what this uh, dense one is talking about. So, um, right, and then we go ahead and compile it. So the mean square, I want to minimize mean squared error. And the optimizer, Usually it should be like I'm not entirely sure why, but Adam is something that um, is, is a good optimizer for time series things, especially for LSTMs. It, it, it works well. It works better than Adagrad, right? So uh, anyway, at least that's what I've noticed. 
Right, and then I'm going to be taking a certain batch size. So in this case, I used one. I probably could have used bigger ones, right? And then I, I go ahead and train it. So let's see what I end up getting. So I'm not going to run this in real time because it does take some time. But um, yeah, so once I, once I train it, here's what I get. So this, this is the test function, but you can see that it's it hasn't done that much that well. You can see it's going up and down, right? So, all right. So let's let me just let me just uh, show you a diagram of what what happened here. So in this particular case, what what we did was we had um, we had x the x's we took we took twenty of them, right? So yes, it's nineteen because it's out of a t plus zero if you must. And then we took a set of 20, and then we're trying to predict the next 20th value. These things over here, these blocks, these are the LSTM modules, right? So I'm not going to go through what's happening inside them for that, uh, I'll, I'll reference a link. But essentially, you, as soon as you input them, you get two things out. You get, first of all, a hidden, the hidden layer values, right? So this will be H t0 if you must and then and then also another cell state thing okay so a c right and um and then same thing so it gets out I'll, I'll put it over here ht plus one and and the cell state t plus one and so on right so these two things are going to feed up right up until the end and then it's the the, the, the at the 20th point it's going to spit out uh, well, the hidden thing. Actually, there's one thing that I forgot to mention here. So, the the hidden values. Right. So, forget about the the cell state because I don't really need it for the last one. That will the hidden values will kind of go into another dense thing. So, in this in this example, I use 32 values. So it's going to be a 32 by one. 32 by one thing that gets output into the y t plus 20. okay so the hidden values don't go straight out into the into the y value it needs to go through one last dense layer so that so that you you know squash these 32 points down to one point which is what we want okay so that's what's that's, that's what's happened in this particular network okay so let's let's go back and just reconcile what we just did uh, so if i go in here Okay, so I have these 32, th these 32 hidden values, right? It, you don't have to worry about the, the cell state because um, if there's 32 hidden hidden points, then there will also, also be 32 cell states, right? So it's not it's it's a it's a thick band rather than just a, a small line that's going through. You do that, and then this final dense layer is important. This dropout thing, it's just a regularization term. In fact, if you if you want, you can ignore it, right? It helps in some cases, but anyway, the, the point is you had this 32, you get squashed down to one. And that's that's it. So I have four four lines of code to create an LSTM. And that's the basic the most basic LSTM. So I'll um, I'll stop it there and then in the next video I'll I'll go on to a bit more advanced um, topics in, in the LSTM world. Thanks for watching.